Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today another video of tips and tricks sent in by subscribers just like you. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I invite you to do that. Lots of cool ideas today. In fact, I even borrowed some from some pictures and you'll see that in a little bit. So let's get started. This is my jigsaw. I'm just gonna take the blades off for a second. And most jigsaws nowadays come with a black or red non-mar plastic base. And most of them seem to, they wear because the, the vibration they wear, they fall off, they don't work, uh, we don't use them anymore. But you know, sometimes when you're cutting things, maybe you're cutting circles in a desk, in a wooden desk, and you don't want to mark the top of that desk. So what do you do to protect that? Well, Jim from Columbia has a great idea. He just uses packing tape, ordinary packing tape, uh, puts a couple of layers on there like that and if you cut it long enough like I have you can actually flip it up the sides uh, press that down I could use another layer on there but you get the idea a uh, quick and easy way and it's easy to take off when you don't need it because these things do wear out but it, you'll get several cuts off of that anyway so I thought that was a great idea thanks Jim I use pails around my workshop fairly often and what I use them for, I will often when I'm working on a project, I will often use a pail as a place where I can store all of the parts like legs and apron sides and so on. And what happens with pails when they get old, you can see this one has seen better days, it's starting to fade and the plastic is getting brittle. Kevin says the best thing you can do is put a wooden base in the bottom of it and it prolongs the life of the pail. And it does that because it's supporting it and even when the pail does fail you can move the wooden part to the bottom. So now I'm going to do that with all of my pails because when I put wood in I don't want the bottom falling out of it. So I thought that was a great idea. Thanks Kevin. This tip comes to us from Joe uh, and Joe says when you're working with your dust collection system sometimes you need to connect two parts or a hose or some connections and they don't connect together so you have to come up with some way of binding these together now obviously the first thing you would think of here is just use duct tape but you know what duct tape is not permanent it it comes off in time you could use packing tape you know, a lot of things are, are temporary he suggests what you can do is take an old um, soda can uh, or even an old beer can and you know what you could I just cut this one off with the utility knife you don't even need tin snips to do that uh, scissors would probably work fine but utility works even better and then you end up with a very thin it plasticized on the inside a very thin piece of aluminum that you can then wrap around there and now you can use a hose clamp on there and clamp that on there and that will be permanent that will work for a long long time and it's easy to disconnect as well and it doesn't leave a bunch of gummy um, sort of sticky stuff from the tape on there. Now there's a, there's a little bit more with this as well and I want to talk about that. First of all you can buy aluminum. This is typically flashing very thin aluminum at most hardware stores. They come in different lengths. You might even be able to get that at your local uh, sheet metal store if you and I always keep a little bit of this on hand because I do use it from time to time. The other thing that works really well is this is um, true duct tape. This is for uh, ducting. Typically we use this on furnace ducting and it's an aluminum tape and it has a sticky back as you can see. I can't take the paper off of it but it doesn't matter. Uh, this stuff also lasts forever. This I've put this stuff on and 20 years later you still can't get it off. And when you talk to anybody in the dust collection industry they will tell you that whenever you're making any connections, you really want those connections to be absolutely airtight. They don't want any leaks anywhere. And this stuff would do that. So what you could do in a situation like this, I still love the idea of the aluminum around there. You could actually take that aluminum around there, do a... Uh, use the hose clamp as well and then you could just sort of touch up the sides uh, with some of this aluminum tape just to make sure that you've got an absolute airtight con 
connection on there. So uh, a few a few things that you can do there to make good tight connections. Uh, and I love this idea of the the aluminum cans. I actually have bits of this around from time to time because I use this for very thin shims sometimes. Uh, metal parts that are not quite fitting perfectly. A very thin shim this works great for as well. So thanks for that Joel. It's a really good reminder. This tip comes from Joel. Uh, and Joel suggests sometimes when you're cutting very thin strips, the, the little pieces of wood can fall down inside the saw, which is annoying because you can lose count of them if you're doing a variety of them. They can get damaged. All sorts of things can happen. What Joel suggests is to roll your table saw blade down and use some painter's tape, he said blue painter's tape, and run it over the insert of your saw just like that and cut that off like that. Now Joel didn't suggest this but I'm suggesting this and that is to burnish. Whenever you're doing something like this, if you burnish that on there, and I use the back of a spoon. I keep spoons around my workshop for all sorts of different things, usually mixing and stirring uh, different finishes, uh, but for something like this it works great too. So you, if you burnish that tape on there, it sticks really well and you'll get a variety of cuts. And now when I turn the saw on, I can wind that up into the tape. And that's what that would look like. There's a little uh, thready coming off there. And you could use that. And now if you're running thin strips across there, they're not going to fall down inside the saw. So I thought that was a good tip, quick and easy. He says that if you, you'll get quite a few pushes through there. And if you burnish it, you'll get even more uh, because the wood will tend to slide over that quite nicely. So that's a good tip. Thanks, Joel. This next tip is sent in by Tim. Actually, Tim, I'm borrowing another one from one of the pictures that you sent me as well. So the first thing I want to talk about is measuring bars. You, all, you have all seen me using measuring bars. I've been using them for years. I lost the 1 16th one. So what I did, I finally broke down and bought another, <laughs> another set of them, but they didn't come with a holder. So I've made a holder for them, just a wooden block with some holes in it. And Tim's suggestion is that you can purchase magnets with a hole in them and they're recessed so that you can put a screw through them so that you never have to worry about them coming out. And I don't think I've covered this off before, but Tim's suggestion was to use these magnets with holes. And I'll put a link to them in whatever it is that you're using. Now, I just want to mention off the top that the new measuring bars that I got, there's the half inch one. Um, look at how much longer they are than my old ones. I love these new ones. And I think they're like 15 bucks for a set or something, but look at how much longer they are. So I'm really happy with this new one. And of course it has, I now have the 16th again, which I've been missing. And hopefully I won't lose this one because it's a lot longer than the last one. But here's the first of Tim's suggestions. Not only can you use these, and this one here only has one on the bottom, and I use that magnet on the bottom a lot. So I put another one on the bottom of this one, but Tim's suggestion is you could put them on the side, you could put it on the side, you could put it on the front, and I never even thought about that, because then you could put it on the side of a tool, you could put it like this, I don't have one there, but you could put one there as well. And then he said, you could also use the same thing. You know, these um, little pill bottles like this. Now, I just have my scrap uh, blades in here, used blades in here, but you could put parts in there for a machine or maybe some other thing. And look at that. You can put that right on the side of your machine so that you know where that is. Then in the background, Tim, I noticed that you had this, and I thought that was a brilliant idea where he's got his combination square or his tri-square, whatever, coming in a variety of names, made himself a little holder. And I'm going to show you how to make these really quick and simple. And now that could sit on the side of a tool as well. Now, 
forewarning, there is this thing sticking out here. So you may want to put a cover or something like that, or maybe keep it low so that you, obviously you don't want to run into it with your head or your upper body, but keeping it lower somewhere on the tool on his, he has it on the side of his saw where you typically wouldn't walk. And I would do the same thing. Uh, you wouldn't be going by here. I would never put it on the front of my saw like that. So just something that you could do another idea to keep this handy because it might be something that you use close to your tool a lot. So here's a, let me show you quickly how you could make something like this. So there's a close up of that little holder and I'm just going to show you quickly what I did to make it. All I did was measure the width of this which happened to be just a little bit under 7 eighths of an inch which was perfect. All I needed to do then was to drill a hole in a little block of wood I don't know what it is, a couple inches or so. And so I drilled, first of all, drilled the hole. Then I mounted it in my vise here. And I took my new little Japanese pole saw. I, I love this little saw. I've always loved little saws. I don't know why. Um, just so handy. And these pole saws from uh, this uh, Suizan. I did a video on these a few years ago. Uh, I'll put a link to that too. Um, quick and easy pull down like that and then you can sort of clean up at the bottom at the uh, at the bottom of the slot there and a chisel to take the bottom part out and now look at that you've got a quick and easy little holder for a speed square and you can put that anywhere uh, you could even mount that on the side of a wall somewhere so that was a good idea Tim I enjoyed that so thanks, Tim. That was a good tip. Uh, lots of things you can use, and those little washers, little magnets with the holes in them, they're great because you don't have to worry about gluing them in and the glue releasing later on. So uh, that was a good tip. Now, wait a minute. I just figured something out. If you move the magnets from here to around the side, then you can have the same thing, but now it's not sticking out anywhere. That's a better way. Well, that concludes my video for today. So thanks to all subscribers who send me tips and ideas. And sometimes when you send me pictures, I might see things in the background that are interesting as well, like I did with Tim today. And for those of you who are new to my channel, maybe you didn't see the video that I made oh, two or three years ago on Japanese pole saws. I'll put a link to that there. You may want to go and look at that. Interesting uh, different uh, concept in pole saws and I've fallen in love with it. And this is my new addition. Uh, it's a fairly new saw to them. And I, I just love little saws. I've always loved little saws. They're always so handy. Anyway, you can have a look at that video if you like. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.